Hi everyone, welcome back to IMAB Restorations and our Project Still Horse Fastback Conversion from a Coupe. Um, the last video uh, we left off with having all the structural stuff repaired as far as frame rails, floor pans, front aprons, firewall. Uh, now we're ready to actually get the, the Fastback Conversion part going on to the car. Uh, very exciting time. Uh, now you're getting to see your fastback starting to take shape from the coupe. And, you know, this is the point where everyone wants to rush to. But as you can see in the previous videos, we had a lot of, a lot of work to get the car prepped and ready to get to this point. So, um, anyway, uh, here we are. Uh, got a quick time lapse video of actually getting the, the top cut off. Uh, we're going to play that and then we'll kind of go through the rest. So you saw in the mini video, um, we got all the structure cut off and it's like, holy shit. We did it all with a torch and air hammers and we just went to town. <coughs> so now you understand why I wanted to get the structure sound before I just started my conversion. Um, this took us... I think we did it probably about an eight hour day, the two of us, as you can see in the video. Uh, and this is not lined up. This is just, you know, the photo on the left is just want to get excited and, and throw that inner structure up there and go ahead and, and start seeing this kind of come together. Uh, cause we still have many hours of prep on this, um, ton of hours of prep. But uh, just wanted to see the conversion part coming into it. Uh, a lot of guys, if you're a like a pillar and all that stuff, rocker panels are in really good shape. You don't need to go to this extreme. Uh, however, I knew on our coupe, it was so rested out, uh, it all needed replaced anyway. So um, that's why I went with this this conversion kit. And I also have the peace of mind knowing that it's all going to be brand new sheet metal when we're finished. Um, so as you can see, we're not going to have much of the original car left that we started with. Uh, really, but the only thing we're going to have left that's original is, uh, as you can see, we're going to get into some other items. Uh, this is kind of st kind of started taking a whole different direction, but really the only thing we're going to have factory is this upper cow and just that very front section of get this pointer right here. Um, and everything else will get replaced and the rear frame rails are in good shape, but we're going to do the mini tub kit. So we're going to end up cutting from here. To hear out just to uh, get the, the larger tubs in but this kind of gives you an idea of why I wanted a jig a and B why I had to get the structure of the the car sound so coupe is no longer and here we are we're gonna let the fastback come into it well there it is after very productive 12 hour day. Got some of the sheet metal just barely clamped up. Nothing's really lined up as you can tell. Just trying to get excited about the basic configuration of the fastback. Not too bad. Walking in the shop this morning, it was a full coop. Leaving. It definitely has the uh, 
flavor of the fastback coming into it now. So we went ahead and put the went ahead and, and threw the uh, roof on there. As you can see, it, nothing's lined up. It's just kind of thrown together because this is the exciting part. This is like, holy shit. I see a fastback now. Uh, the kit's really amazing. Like I said, for five, six grand, um, you can get yours and you can do this conversion. And it didn't really matter because as you see with this project, everything was so rested, everything needs to be replaced anyway. So in my aspect of thinking, I really wanted a fastback to start with. So um, they're just too expensive to go out and buy. These people are asking $25,000 for a car that is about the same shape of our, as our coupe. So even if I'd go out and spend $25,000 on a, a, what they call a real fastback, it was gonna take the same amount of parts to repair the fastback anyhow. So why not start with a coupe? Um, especially if you already own one and it's not that bad. Because, I mean, if it's not that bad, you don't have to put the whole uh, unicide in. You can just section the back part of it in. Saves a lot of time and labor, and you don't have to pull the dash out. You don't have to do, you know, if you don't have to do floor pans and such, uh, you're, you're already 10, step, 10 steps ahead of me as far as what I had to work with. But uh, as you can see, I, I get super excited. Uh, I just don't, I, I get it. I mean, so many people are dogging uh, the prices of the fastbacks, and you don't need to. Uh, it's just you don't really need to because it's supply and demand. Uh, people are wanting the fastback. They're very iconic. Uh, people with coupes kind of get butt chapped because all of a sudden a fastback is worth three to four times more than what their coupe is. And don't get mad. I mean, if you if you like your coupe, keep it as a coupe. I mean, a 67, 68 coupe is the best looking coupe, in my opinion, Ford made. And they look good too. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. But like in this particular, and if you're watching this video, it's because you want to fast back as well. So um, as you can see, uh, it replaces so much of that rusty metal that was up in the, the A pillars. And even the rocker panels, when we were taking this apart and had the air hammer, just air hammer going down would pop like three welds at once. Well, that kind of tells me the factory rocker panel welds were already getting fatigued just over over the amount of time, uh, you know, 55 years or whatever of life. You know, the welds were getting fatigued by now. So uh, I felt really good to go ahead and put the entire kit in just on a structural uh, standpoint and uh, a safety standpoint because if an air hammer can separate two, three factory spot welds at once, uh, what's gonna happen when you get T-boned? Those welds are really gonna pop easy. So, but I don't understand the people complaining about, oh, you don't have a real fast back, you don't have this, you don't have that. Well, if you go out and spend 25 grand on a real fast back that needed this complete kit to begin with, why not start with your coupe? That's my only thing. And then the direction we're going with this build, I've said it before and I'll say it again, as you'll see in the videos, it's not going to matter. It started out as a coupe when we're done with it. So at this point, I uh, decided to go ahead and get the rear frame rails cleaned up. Uh, the, the back trunk drop-offs, they weren't that expensive. And these had a little bit of rust. And I thought, you know what? If those are out of the way, I can go ahead and get the inside those frame rails cleaned up real good. So I went ahead and removed those, and that allowed me to actually get inside the frame rail as well. Uh, just want the back frame all stripped down to metal, uh, self etch primer put back on. Uh, if we're going to do it, you might as well just do it right. So uh, then the like the the back panel, uh, whatever that the back cross member, you know, it, it was kind of rusty, had a little bit of damage. I don't even think it was a hundred dollars. Might as well just go ahead and replace that with new. So in this, these set of photos, that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, go ahead and get those cleaned up. So at this point, we just got our Mustang the Fear mini tub kit in. 
I had to just kind of get up there and lay those in just to see how cool it was going to be to have the mini tubs. Um, I do realize they're just laying in there. What I did like about the uh, Mustang to Fear mini tubs is it allows you, allows you to tub, but also uh, keep the factory back seat so you don't have to modify it. That allows you to go ahead and get a little bit larger tires on the back of it. Uh, the picture on the right, I kind of skipped this. So we're going to go back just a bit. If we had not put the whole unicide in and replaced the rocker panel, look at all that rust inside the rocker panel that we would have never, never seen. So with that being said, um, you know, it was just, I'm glad we, we went this route because we were able to get that all cleaned up and down to metal and self etch prime. So, you know, you kind of have to decide on your own how far you're wanting to go with yours. Um, you know, if it's in good shape, I mean, it's kind of your call, but I could tell you if we had left this another four or five years, that definitely would have went, you know, went through the inner rocker. Uh, so, you know, we got that addressed and we're good, good to go there. So you can see in this set of photos, uh, got the frame rails all stripped down. All the rust is totally 100% gone off of them. Uh, went ahead and threw some soft etch primer on it. Uh, now it's time to go ahead and get the, uh, what they call the trunk floor, which, you know, I guess would be side aprons. Uh, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time to strip this all down to metal, but it's definitely well worth it. So with the frame rails all stripped, inside out, soft edge primer on the outside it was time to go ahead and lay the uh, trunk floor or side aprons um, got those those fit like a glove they fit really well uh, everything fit well uh, me and aftermarket parts have came a long way so i did a bunch of plug welding on those that's what held those in um, time wise i mean i don't know how probably a day to strip the the frame rails and get those soft etch prime. Probably another day of uh, getting the, the trunk floors lined out and drilled and, and welded on. So it just makes for a lot cleaner project. Um, like I said, baby steps, brick by brick. Uh, I was excited to, to get it this far. And, you know, the fastback. Uh, conversion kit it was just kind of getting excited got the unicide clamped in place so super fired up at this moment and um, nothing really all this if you're doing this this is all pretty much straight forward there's nothing tricky about any of this at all uh, the aftermarket parts pretty much fit exactly where the OEM parts was so not a not a huge deal to, to do all this um you know it definitely helped having a jig again knowing my my frame rails weren't going to move uh so got that part done now it's time to go ahead and make sure the inner rocker panels are stripped and soft edge prime as well and get those unisides clamped up into position and make sure they measure out and start welding the unicide in along with the uh, upper roof support. So in these two photographs, you can see the inner rocker. Uh, we went and skicked it down, got all the all the rust off of it, got it stripped down, soft edge primer, did that to both sides. Went ahead and clamped up the the unicide to it, got it lined up. Uh, I a lot of a lot of things I do, uh, I kind of leave some panels. So, like the OEM cow never moved, so I kind of know when I go to line this the the Suna side up, you have little notches on the rocker panel, which even the factory rocker panel wasn't like perfectly lined up, but it pretty much fit exactly where the original panel was. But you know, once you put the a the unicide in and it matches up here on the the cowl panel uh and it matched the firewall real well 
match the inner rocker real well. You pretty much know that that's where it needs to be at. So got it clamped in position. Uh, went ahead and got it welded in. Hey, it's John with IMAB Restorations. Uh, doing the fastback, coop to fastback conversion video, just kind of getting you guys up to speed. Um, we got our unicide pretty much where it needs to be at, we think. Uh, before we put that on there, uh, we drilled all the uh, holes in the rocker panels to plug weld it. So if it's where it needs to be, we don't have to remove it again. We just start welding it and put it in, put it in its position. Um, so we got lined up and instead of you know spot welding it, I went ahead and just put like screws over six inches all the way around it, kind of hold it in position. Uh, you don't have to do that. You guys can go ahead. Some people like to prefer to tack weld it in different places. Uh, I hate that because in the event you do have to adjust this unicide, you have to break apart the spot welds and you kind of mess up the panels when you do that. Uh, this way, when I do the screws, you can just kind of pop the screws out, you know, put it on, you know, kind of adjust it and put it back on. Um, but we are pretty good, pretty good. You know, you have different alignments like right here, your front cowl, you want it to fit real nice against your front cowl. Uh, you do have some alignment notches in your rockers already from the factory. Now I noticed when I did, took my old original rocker panels off, they didn't line up quite perfect. So I wasn't as concerned with making sure those lined up perfect as I was making sure that these two edges were flat and right lined up real nice and this corner. So now that we have this side pretty much on where it needs to be, probably have, I don't know, 25, 30 screws holding it in place. It will be time to do the same to the other side, get it laid up where we think it needs to be uh, screw it on, and then we have to test fit all the sheet metal. The roof, the quarter panel, um, you know, trunk lid, all that has to, has to kind of go on and just make sure everything where it's at. You don't really need, if you're doing this whole unicide, you really don't need to worry about how your door is going to fit just yet because that's already pretty much predetermined with the unicide because your gap from your A pillar back to your B pillar, you can't change it with the unicide and it should be pretty much preset and predetermined. So that's kind of where we, we're at on the uh, coupe to fastback conversion. Uh, I'm not real sure how much more I'm gonna get done this week. Uh, I know I'm taking this weekend off, kind of need a break from this project. Uh, I've been hitting it pretty hard last month, month and a half, but Still really, really excited. Um, I just need some, probably a little bit of dirt, dirt bike time over the next couple weeks and get out and ride the dirt bike and kind of get my mind off this project for a sec. Uh, well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Have any questions, comments, you know, just leave them. And you know, go ahead and make a comment, remark, question, and I'll answer you the best I can. Uh, when we get done with this, you know, once we get all the, cause I won't weld anything until all the sheet metal is fitting the way I want. Because you, you will have to make adjustments. I will cover those hopefully in video and, uh, and photos. And just kind of explaining to the people that's never done something like this, exactly what I'm doing to make this stuff line up and fit. Uh, thanks a lot, Till next time, uh, take it easy.
So this stage in the build, uh, we have the unisides clamped, welded. Uh, another in the right spot, got them lined up with the upper cowl, the rocker panel, inner rocker panel. Um, so I know that they're lined up and ready to go and, and where they need to be at as well. So the next stage is um, getting, you can see the photo on the left. We have the unisides welded into place. Uh, now we need to get our crossbars for the roof support uh, welded into place. Now this, it was a little tricky. It wasn't tricky. I was just fortunate enough to have uh, a factory fastback to measure because I needed to measure from, if you're looking at the photo on the right, I need to measure from the upper corner down to the, be the right upper corner down to the left lower rocker panel and kind of do an X check to make sure they're both the same. So I went on the factory fastback uh, that I had access to and I measured exactly from that point across. Both sides are the same. So I had to, I think the driver's side was a little laid in. I think actually both sides were a little, just a little bit laid in. So I had to put a, a port of power from the rocker in a rocker to that corner and push it out to where it needed to be and then once i had that dimension correct i just i just took uh, the square tubing uh cut it to fit and welded it solid uh well not solid but tack welded it so it wouldn't move and it would hold the sides exactly where they needed to be uh double checked my measurements across the upper roofs uh, the front as well as the back got those welded in went ahead and found the location of the back filler panel got it welded in so in this photograph it was now all the inner structure is welded into place and um, this took a little bit of time just because the car we had access to was not actually in the shop. It was just down the street at uh, Snake Pit Customs. And uh, he was generous enough to let us come in. And we work, our shops work hand in hand. We built, built a, a couple SEMA cars together. So uh, I was very fortunate to access to his 68 Fastback. So um this did take a little bit of time and it's always nerve-wracking because you want to make sure it's like you i measure five times and just double check it and double check it and double check it because if this part is off any at all it's going to throw everything off so at this stage of the build you have to make sure uh, everything is welded where it needs to be at um you know, for instance, you know, right now, uh, Snake Pit actually has a 65 uh, fastback conversion. Some other shop or some other person started on doing a convertible to fastback, and they did not have the tops where they need to be. And that thing was all over the place. Uh, Damon had to actually end up cutting it all back apart and... I mean, he made it. He made it work, but it was a lot of work. Uh, it was just where a novice body man didn't really know what he was doing, and he just started going for it. And you know, thank God he stopped where he was at, because that car would have never, never been right. Um, and it took quite a bit of work just to make it get it back to where it needed to be. Uh, I think they actually ended up cutting the roof supports back out bending uh, the sides where they needed to be and ordering new roof supports and get those welded in. So this is a very critical part of the build. So definitely take your time and make sure those measurements can be correct for you and make sure you're square. And um, just, I don't know, I can't, I can't stress enough. This is definitely the most critical part of the entire build because everything else mounts to this framework if it's off it's going to throw everything off so just you know use your head tape measure take your time make sure these dimensions are correct 
and you should not have a problem.